Welcome back to another video. Today I have got all the things to get done. It's my first day of my holidays where I'm on my own. Um, well, not totally on my own. The kids are in the house, but Stephen's at work and I've got a ton of things that I want to get through. I'm going to take you along with me. Um, the starting first up is I've been getting more and more things from the supermarket just because that's just how life's been, okay? And I don't want to do that. So a lot of things such as, for example, hummus. I know you can make hummus at home very easily. We're getting straight into this, by the way. You know, you know how it's going. There's a lot to do. Um, and in my freezer, I've got a lot of chicken liver and lamb liver, as you do as a small holder. So what I've decided is, I know you can make hummus very easily. I've got the chickpeas actually tins in the um, pantry. So we are gonna do that at some point, or I'm gonna do that at some point. Um, but I've decided that I'm gonna do pate. I've got a ton of lamb's liver that I got out. I actually thought it was chicken liver. Who knew? It's not, it's lamb's liver. So of all places, I have found a recipe on a Tesco website. Um, I was hoping there'd be one in one of my old country small holding ways books, but there isn't. It's all for chicken, uh, chicken livers. So first up today, we're going to make some lamb liver pate. Now, I know this isn't for everybody. You can use different livers. I actually don't like liver just cooked up, um, but I do like it in a pate. And it, apparently it freezes very well. We'll find out together. But the point is that I'm trying to replace some of the things that I've been relying on buying from the supermarket with more homemade and homegrown stuff. And that's going to be a theme throughout the week's um, throughout the videos that are coming out over the next couple of weeks while I've got my two weeks holiday. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time in the garden later on. Um, Stephen's at work at the moment, as I say. I'm going to get this fantastic store room that we're in the middle of putting together. I need to start pulling all of the stuff into that, but I haven't got the shelves up on the walls just yet. We'll get to it. We'll get to it and I'll tell you all about it then. Anyway, for now, I'm going to start off making this lamb liver recipe. Never made it before, so we'll see how it turns out together. Right, I've got all the ingredients at hand. We've got butter, onions, garlic, tomato puree, double cream, a tart of brandy, there's bacon in here and the liver is in there. So I'm just going to get it all prepared and I'll just really quickly show you what the process will be. So I've got the rashes of bacon. So the recipe for one portion of the recipe is just two rashes. I'm quadrupling this. So I've got eight rashes of bacon cooking down in some of the butter. I haven't used as much butter as it recommended because I think it needs to keep some back to put on top of the pate at the end to kind of seal it and you certainly don't need four times the amount of butter to cook the bacon in. It'd be like a heart attack in a waiting to happen. So I'm just cutting up four relatively small onions now. Um, we are going through our onions so quickly it's unbelievable um, but you'll have seen in a different video that I've recently put out that I'm sewing like a mad woman with onions and all sorts of things because um, I really, really want to be able to have enough onions all year round that we've grown here because there's homegrown onions, well, homegrown anything, just absolutely amazing. I thought I'd let you know just while I'm chopping these up some of the things I've been up to already this morning. So it's mid-morning now um, and I've been and sorted the animals that I needed to do this morning because Grace goes down and does um, the animals for me now on a morning. Um, she's finished school so she's helping out there but we'd have noticed and we'll go down and check together later to see how she's doing. There's a big girl, the horse, and um, she's come out in hives overnight um, which will be because of the bites and the stinging insects that are in the field with her. So it's, it's catch-22 you take them in and leave them in a stable bod out of the mind but where they'll be relatively fly free or do you have them in the field um where they can be open to the insects and things but happily roaming around with the sun on the backs so i continue to choose the latter um but it does mean that she's come down with quite a bad case of the hive so we've been and given some antihistamines this morning just human cetrazine antihistamines um, and we'll go and check on her when this lamp pate is done we'll check on her together i'm going to add four onions in um, with the bacon now and four garlic cloves as well. So in here now I've got everything except the double cream of the recipe. So we've got the tomato puree and we've got the all of the meat and the onions. Um, what I have noticed is there's no herbs in this recipe. So in the other one there is. So I'm definitely going to give that a go if I've got more liver in the freezer. And I've just added the brandy in as well. So the only thing that needs adding in it when this has cooled off and being blitzed is the double cream. I've just gone to show you how the pate is looking. I managed to smash two eggs all over the counter. Anyway, cleaned up now. This is the pate that's go it's going to cool down, or the ingredients for the pate. They need to cool down now, and then we're going to get the food processor out, which I've just got out behind me, with it all together, um, and add some double cream, and that'll be it. Done. Right, I've just popped on a heavy um, chopping board on top of that, just to keep the flies out while it cools down. In the meantime, Grace has just been over and said one of the lambs is not looking too good so we're going to go and take a look at her so there's still plenty of time to get that finished before lunch and i also need to start filling 
um, stars are, taking some of the stuff out of the garage that we stored in there in the garage uh, back into stars. Um, but so much that won't get in Stephen's way when he's trying to do the shelves at least. So this lamb is the one that Grace bathed uh, recently. So we're going to have a look at her again and make sure that it's nothing um, that we can see. So Grace said she's got something on a mouse looking at it. So whether or not it's, um, we'll, we'll just have a look anyway and then we'll wait and see. Um, so we're just going to get some water together so we can give her a clean up and check on her um, and probably give her a worm as well. Hello, mister. <laughs> Thankfully all is well, as you can see, four happy, happy sheep. Um, Grace caught her and we've checked her over and it was just something that she's, uh, some leaves or something that was just on her lips, but from a distance it looks worse. Um, they do probably need worming again. Um, we need to check the date so we've actually run out of the one that we use so Stephen will hopefully pick some up tomorrow or tonight um, after he finishes work if he picks my message up before he finishes work but that's a big relief we don't want any more ill livestock Well, I've got the butter melting that's going to go on the top of the pate once I've put it into the little pots. I've got a couple of larger ones, a couple of ramkins, just what I've got spare in the house. It's a little bit sloppy and I'm just suddenly thinking, I wonder if that's why I asked for so much butter, so that when it goes in the fridge, the butter solidifies and solidifies the pate. It'll all eat. I'm thinking this will be amazing with um, sourdough crackers. So what I tend to do is just using the sourdough discard, I just make crackers directly from that with a bit of sea salt on, a few herbs. Um, don't add any extras in or anything like that. Let's check on this butter. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, sourdough crackers I think will go amazingly with this. Um, but I'm just going to put them in some freezable jars. I'll keep one out for us to try later. These will have a good few hours in the fridge before Stephen gets home. We can try it later on before our main meal tonight. I've just got to transfer it from the food processor into the little jars, pour some of the melted butter over and pop it in the fridge. Then we can get on with the next task. I'm afraid the consistency and the um, colour doesn't do it many favours, but we shall still give it a whirl. Last them in the fridge, and I have to be honest, I'm not holding out that much hope. It's Maybe it's just the smell of the liver, but I'm not used to it. Um, so I'm hoping that Stephen's going to like it. We will try it later, but that's going to chill for a couple of hours in the fridge now. And I'm going to get on with my next task, which is all about the storeroom. So starting at this side, then the sink's all plumbed in in terms of for cold water now. And obviously I showed you the bucket that we've got for drainage. Probably going to put a couple of shelves above the sink. Um, not too sure in case we need to have something that might maybe tall in the sink from washing things off from in the garden. I'm not sure yet, but possibly two shelves above them. But starting around about here, um, where you can see that kind of natural line, we're going to have shelves all the way along this wall here that will be just enough for the 500 and the one litre size jars. Now, the other thing that I'm going to need to put in, as you can see here, are the um, Demi Johns. That took far too long for me to remember what that was called. Um, so I've got a couple more Demi Johns in the garage, I think, and I think they will do well along this back wall here. But I've also got a bread maker that I want to go in here and I've got a couple of other appliances as well. So I'm not too sure how to work that out. But I don't want any appliances across this back surface here um, because this is where I'll be doing a lot of the working and along here too. So I can do any preparation that I want, pull the canner out, do some canning. Once it's all done, move it into the sink, get it washed up and get it put straight away. Now, as you can see, I've already got this, brought the dehydrator out. We've got some scales and I've got some different size jars just so that I can figure out what we can put where. But I would like to have all of kind of the bulkier appliances in here rather than through there. And then I've obviously got the outside bit, which I'm using to do any um, bulk tidying up of the garlic that you saw me do, you know, any preparation of the onions and things like that. Um, so in here, I'd like to keep as many of these larger appliances as possible just to keep them out of the way of everybody else because there's only me that uses them i just need to know how many i've got um, so i'm going to work through that now i've started bringing these through but again i don't want to bring too much stuff in the, in so that it's in stephen's way when he starts working on the shelves and um, so i'll bring a couple more things in and then we'll see where we get to from that i've got a pig job now that i need to get on with um, the pigs, as you might have seen on a previous video, they keep throwing the house all over the place now that they've snapped the fence post that's keeping it in situ. They haven't yet escaped into our neighbours and I hope that that doesn't happen. 
I am in the middle of doing a small holding video, which I did say I was doing yesterday, um, and it's kind of ended up being more of a today and a tomorrow thing. So I'll explain more on that. But needless to say, the pig job that I've got to do this afternoon is just giving them a bit more bedding because they're getting into the terrible habit of throwing all of the bedding out and laying on the hard floor. Some might say, just let them get on with it. But they're only going to be around until the end of August with us. So we're trying to treat them, you know, like kings until the end of August. So we're going to go and take a look at them next. And then depending on what Stephen gets on with tonight, I might meet you back here later on tonight. But if not, I'm going to see you down the pigs in a minute anyway. <laughs> As you can see, modelled by the lovely Grace, we've got some um, tomatoes that are a little bit past and we've pulled some apples off, off the tree that are just a little bit smaller than the rest. So that's going straight in for the pigs when we get down there. And we've also got some of the, um, the shaving bales that were outside when the horses were outside over the winter that have got some weather damage to them. So we're going to use that as bedding for the pigs. Obviously not the bad bit, only the good bits. That's what the scissors are for to open that. And we've got our trusty helpers. Come on, Rodney. And Buster. Ready, Grace? what it's all about if only you could do this every day it would be amazing the pigs are happy loving the tomatoes and the apples that we've put them down there um, they've still got this bit of green grass up here that we're hoping that they'll achieve before the end of august which is when they're going to be with us until right now i'm filling up the water bucket um grace is up there she's took the barrow back up and um, switch that on for me, the hose pipes up in the greenhouse. And I've just put that bale over there in their little house so they'll be nice and cosy. Stephen was worried that they wouldn't be comfortable. He likes, having, uh, he likes pigs to be comfortable. Anyway, so all looking good out here. The flies were a bit annoying today. The horses, uh, Sonic hasn't got his fly mask or his fly rug on because he thinks that you're trying to kill him whenever you go near it. And Lydia is, oh, she's behind the tree, behind the hawthorn tree typically. She's fully kitted up but they've managed to get her stomach, uh, which is what I was talking about earlier. So we'll go and have a little look at her before we finish. How are you doing, lass? Hey. So unfortunately, they've got all of her stomach under here. Can you see the lumps and the bumps in her skin there? So they're getting underneath the, um, underneath the rug. But she's fine in there, aren't you, dear? At least it's keeping you off the face. Rodney's looking for me, he thinks I've left him. Got to be careful that he doesn't get stood on by this big one. Well, we've reached the end of a very productive day. I'm super pleased with how Monday has gone. This is what Stephen has got finished when he came home from work. So he hasn't even been off work today and he's come home and got these shelves done. He actually made the shelves and um, took the measurements and then went to the workshop and made the, made the shelves in the workshop. And then we carried them in in one piece just so it was, it was easier than working in here. because it's quite a tight fitting space, especially when he has to crawl underneath there and things to put the screws in up over he did put these middle bits in once the shelves were up though because their stability um they're screwed to the top so he did do those once he put them in they are looking really really amazing i'm chuffed to bits with them so they can quite happily sit underneath there until we come to use them and then to use them we, we, we are going to bring the jars out a little bit because the bubbler doesn't fit on while they're there because we didn't want to lose the space at the top but that's absolutely fine we may end up putting some down this wall instead when they're fermenting depending on if we're going to use some more of these size jars 
we'll just have to see as time moves on we'll see what works best so i'm not too sure if all of these appliances are going to stay out or if they're going to go underneath yet we shall wait and see on that one but i'm really really pleased with how it's um how it's looking at the end of today it's only monday and we've got this far already so let's see what tomorrow brings for now we're both done in it's not actually that late it's only eight o'clock um so there's a little bit of daylight left i think we'll go to the veg plot and i'm going to pick some herbs because i'm going to do us a herbal tea to have before we go to sleep tonight i meant to say actually um the other thing that stephen did when he came home well one of the other things that he did uh, we went down to check on the pigs after i put the um the extra bedding in there oh it's quite breezy and we noticed that one of the pen fence poles was snapped so he's been in round and fixed a couple of fence poles as well so hopefully he will sleep tonight that's the plan right i'm going to look for some lemon balm for the tea um because that's supposed to be really really helpful for sleeping um but it's flowered so i'm not sure if that's going to be suitable oh, it's actually looking okay after we um cut it back so I've never made it with fresh lemon balm leaves before. Sacrilege, I hear you cry. I'm just going to take like, I don't know, a few of the tips. Let me know, is this what you guys would do? Um, and I'm going to pop it in the teapot with a couple of other herbs that I've got dried in the house. Now I haven't been out in the garden today as much as I would want, um, just with getting everything else done. So tomorrow that's going to be the aim. I've got a couple of kitchen tasks that I do want to get done. But first thing, I want to be out here. I've got the potatoes to harvest um, because you've seen those the other day. Possibly very blighty. We'll have to wait and see. The other ones are catching up with them now. So I'm running out of time to get those out of the ground. Um, and there's quite the tomatoes are the other thing. I need to get the tomatoes harvested. Um, and we're going to make that ketchup. Um, so they're going to be the kitchen tasks that I need to get done but it'll be with the things that I need to harvest first. So if I can get these potatoes out and just leave them out to dry, um, because I don't think we do any rain until the weekend, then that'll hopefully work. So anyway, I'll, I'll show you how the tea turns out. Never had this one before fresh, so we'll see. And I'm gonna bid you good night, um, up bright and early in the morning. I need to fill stores up with those jars as well, so it's gonna be another busy day.